Hi Preps, this is day four of getting our knowledge ready on our big book Night Noises. This is our last day today of reading our big book. And today we are learning to read with fluency. Fluency means that I am trying to read smoothly and not like a robot. So my learning intention today is today we are learning to read our story with fluency. And my success criteria is I can read the story without sounding like a robot. I can read the story smoothly, but I can also use the punctuation to help me read smoothly. So that means when I see some punctuation like a full stop or an exclamation mark or a comma, I either stop or I pause and I read the story. Today you're also looking for your wow word, companion in the story. And at the end we'll have a little look at some more of our wow word work. Night Noises, written by Mem Fox and illustrated by Terry Denton. Today when I read, I won't be using Chunky Monkey or Stretchy Snake to help me read because I want to be able to now read it with fluency. And because I've been reading this book for two or three days now, I should be able to read the words in the story without needing to use a decoding strategy. Lily Laceby lived in an old cottage in the hills. Her hair was as wispy as cobwebs in ceilings. Her bones were as creaky as floorboards at midnight. Her only companion was a fat old dog called Butch Aggie. People who lived nearby said Lily was nearly 90, but they were only guessing. One wild winter's evening, as Lily Laceby sat by her fire, snug and warm, she drifted off to sleep and began to dream. Butch Aggie dozed at her feet. Outside, clouds raced along the sky, playing hide and seek with the moon. Wind and rain rattled at the windows and trees banged against the roof. Somewhere in the distance, car doors opened and closed softly. Click! Clack! Butch Aggie listened, but Lily Laceby kept on dreaming. Feet tiptoed up the garden path. Crinch, crunch. Butch Aggie cocked her head, but Lily Laceby went on dreaming. Voices whispered in bushes. Murmur, mutter, shh. Butch Aggie bristled, but Lily Laceby went on dreaming. Eyes peeped through keyholes, squint, peek, peer. Butch Aggie's throat rumbled, but Lily Laceby went on dreaming. Hands tried to turn doorknobs, twist, test, rattle. Butch Aggie bared her teeth, but Lily Laceby went on dreaming. Knuckles drummed on door frames, nick, knack, knock. Butch Aggie leapt up growling, but Lily Laceby went on dreaming. Fists beat upon doors and voices shouted at windows. Yell, clatter, bang, bang, bang. Butch Aggie barked and barked. Lily Laceby woke up with a start. Who is it? she called. Who is it on a night like this? It's only us. Let us in. Let us in! Creak, crack, went Lily Laceby's knees as she got to her feet. Snick, snack, went the bolts on the door. And in came her two sons, her three daughters, her 14 grandchildren, her 35 great-grandchildren, and they were all calling out, Surprise! Happy birthday! Put the kettle on! <laughs> Happy 90th birthday! Where's the toilet? And her great-great-grandchild Emily, aged four and a half, and her 47 friends. Surprise! For she's a jolly good granny. Happy birthday! Are you really 90, whispered Emily, aged four and a half. 
Lily Laceby held her hand and smiled. Inside, I'm only four and a half like you, she whispered back. But don't tell anyone. So this week, our word of the week was companion. And you had a really big job this week of having to tell your mum or dad what you thought companion meant. And you had to put it into a sentence and then you had to find some synonyms for companion. So just to recap, the dictionary meaning was a person or animal that someone spends a lot of time with or someone they travel with. A sentence might have been the dog Butch was Lily Laceby's companion. And some synonyms for companion were friend, partner, mate, colleague, workmate. You might have come up with a few extra of your own words. Today, I would like you to try using some of the synonyms for companion in a sentence and see if you think they make sense in your sentence. So can you swap the word companion for a synonym and does the sentence still make sense? So for instance, the dog was a good companion for the boy. If I take out companion and I put in the word friend, does it still make sense? The dog was a good friend for the boy. Or if I take out companion and I put mate, does the sentence make sense? The dog was a good mate for the boy. Can you see if you can try a different synonym in the sentence that means the same thing as companion and see if your sentence still would make sense? You might like to have mum or dad film you and then send out us your thoughts on dojo so have a go at telling us a sentence with one of your synonyms in it this time for companion and post it to class dojo good luck